You've been pretty mean through the years on Twitter. I've been pretty mean through the years on yes. Twitter, but I don't think that's a reason to excise somebody from the platform. Uh, you know, actually, plenty of people enjoy what I do. Over 380,000 of them, as you, say, as you say, enjoy what I do. And there's certainly no suggestion whatsoever that I was involved in any kind of racist or sexist harassment of Leslie Jones. What I did was dislike her movie and write a very critical review that she didn't like. After that, I teased her a little on Twitter. If a journalist can't tease a Hollywood blockbuster actress, I don't know what this platform is about. You know, it's a very you saw it all, your, your, many of your followers, not all, but many of your followers started to attack her as well. I mean, yeah. some of those things were brutal. Wouldn't you acknowledge? Yes, of course. And some of them were completely disgusting. But I'm not responsible for what other people uh, post on the internet. Is Justin Bieber responsible when his fans cut themselves with the hashtag cut for Bieber? Is Beyonce responsible when her fans go after One Directioners with death threats and rape threats? Of course not. It's preposterous to suggest that a public figure, an entertainment personality, or a prominent journalist is responsible for what other people post on the Let internet. Let me read to you what you wrote in 2012 at The Colonel. Sure. It was a longer piece. The internet is not a universal human right. We ban drunks from driving because they're a dangerous to others. Isn't it time we did the same to trolls? Trolls, for viewers who don't know, are how people refer to people like you who are mean on Twitter. <laughs> which, and there are very many people. People like I mean, meanness. You wrote you know. this, right? No, of Is course. this what happened? You don't agree with this anymore? Uh, no, I, I agree with it entirely. You know, Twitter is a private company. It's entitled to do what it likes. The problem is it's lying to users. Jack Dorsey says that it's the free speech wing of the free, you know, free speech platform, the free speech wing, the free speech party, that he wants it to be a utility like water, that Twitter is the place you go if you want to express yourself. That's a lie. There is a systematic campaign against conservative and libertarian points of view on Twitter. And what, how do we know this? Not from the company's own notoriously opaque statements, but from the fact that they apply their own rules so capriciously and so inconsistently that there is only one possible explanation. Twitter is perfectly happy to host ISIS, to host death threats against Donald Trump supporters, and they do they nothing try, in they any of to these take those down. cases. Not hard enough. But you make a joke about a feminist, or you dislike the new Ghostbusters movie, or you have the audacity to dislike the work in, uh, you know, in Hollywood of somebody who happens to be black or happens to be a woman, and then you get suspended. Well, let me read That's you what Twitter absurd. says. There, that we had a, a guest on from Twitter earlier this morning who spoke about this. We also have just uh, statements and policies are available on their website. Mm -hmm. Our rules prohibit inciting or engaging in the targeted abuse or harassment of others. Over the past 48 hours in particular, we've seen an uptick in the number of accounts violating these policies and have taken enforcement actions against these accounts, ranging from warnings that also require the deletion of tweets violating our policies to permanent suspension. There's absolutely no evidence whatsoever, and Twitter has produced none that I'm in any way responsible for inciting harassment against somebody else. It's just an absurd claim, and there's no proof of it. What there is proof of is that Leslie Jones did not like my review, that I teased Leslie Jones a little bit on Twitter. Well, so sue me. I mean, what's the big deal? But no you, big deal. People you, do that kind of thing all the time. The reason they came for me is I have been public enemy number one for Twitter for a very long time. You acknowledge it's a private company. It can do it once. Of course, but it's got to be honest with its users. And the other thing, of course... And I it can the change its rules any time it Of wants. course. But what's going to happen if, if Twitter does change its rules to clamp down on all the most fun people on its network, all of the most interesting people on its network, is that people are going to leave. Twitter's investors should be very worried right now because what they're seeing is a platform they're very concerned with user growth, they're very concerned with the time that the users spend on the site, and they're very concerned with the engagement of their key users. Investors this decision... and executives are concerned about just the opposite, that it's become such a mean place that people abandon it. They've struggled with growth. But that's, an, a, that's a, a separate but related problem because Twitter's product is terrible. And Twitter's product has always been terrible. Why is if, it terrible? Uh, well, it's a terrible experience. It is completely uh, befuddling for, uh, for users. The reason they have problems acquiring new users is that nobody understands how it works. It's not intuitive like Facebook is. And if Twitter had, at the start, built tools to deal with um, you know, different groups of people who don't really want to hear from each other, this problem would, ne would never have happened. What, what the do problem we do is about the fact that the internet has become a very mean place? Why I've, is that? And why? And you yourself endorsed? Well, I mean, I endorse free speech. I endorse the people's right to be mean, people's right to be aggressive, but you people's you, right you, to be you mischievous you and dissident and fun. In that piece that you wrote for the Colonel, you acknowledge yeah. how painful it can be. Yes, but if you when you're on the receiving end, do you know what? My view is not going to be popular with everybody, but it is popular with a lot of people, and that is if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. My observation in this particular case is that this movie is not doing well. I, have, I suspect that Leslie Jones has been deployed on Twitter it's, to play it's the victim. The bigger issue is there a decline in civility because of the internet? Yes, but you know, one of the things one of the things that I've observed as a tech journalist, because I'm, I'm tech editor at Bright, was my day job, and I'm not embroiled in controversies like this. And one of the things I've, I've observed is there is a particular political slant to a lot of this 
abuse and harassment stuff. Much of it is used um, ideologically. Much of it is used to criticize libertarian and conservative points of view. You know what? We're all in public life. We all get criticism. We all get death threats. We all get rape threats. We all get bomb threats. But there's only one particular side of the political divide that makes hay out of them, that constantly whinges about them, that in fact turns them into a sort of career. You are also the leader of Gays for Trump, is that correct? Well, I'm not the leader, but I did host a party last night. It was fantastic. A party for Daddy, who I call him Daddy. You call Donald Trump Daddy? I Why? do, because I want to be the father of the nation. I've come here as a warning from Europe to you people about what happens when you clamp down too much on free speech, when you forget this set, the, the key importance of the First and the Second Amendments, right? We've see, we're seeing it happen in Europe. We're seeing Islamization of Europe. We're seeing clampdowns on free speech. In Nottingham in the UK, it's now, uh, it's, it's now an arrestable offense to be misogynist. Well, what does that even mean? That's in the eye of the beholder. In Scotland, you can be arrested by the police for being offensive. That's really Orwellian. That's insane. So um, when Donald Trump talks about banning Muslims, you don't see that as contradictory to everything you just said? No, I don't. Because Why banning, not? because America is, you know, America is founded on freedoms. America is founded on, you know, on the Constitution, the First and Second Amendment, and it is modern Western liberal democratic capitalism that gave women and gays and blacks the rights they enjoy. And where those things don't exist elsewhere in the world, women and gays have a much worse time. By preventing, you know, by preventing immigration from a culture that wants me dead, frankly, um, it is a protection of freedom. Well, I'm going to stop you for one second. We have live pictures coming in from uh, Donald Trump's plane arriving in Cleveland. There you see uh, coming into town. He doesn't speak officially to till tomorrow night. Uh, but Donald Trump arriving in Cleveland. Daddy Force One. You call it Daddy Force One? I do. When I'm press yeah. secretary, I want Debonair Force One. Milo Yiannopoulos. Thanks very much. It's been interesting. Thanks so much Thank for joining you. us. All right, let's.